everyone. My name is Dave White. I'm the owner of NSR Tactical, and today we are at the Holster Smith Workshop, and we are going to be making a two-piece holster. This is just a sample, so you guys know what we're talking about. Some of the tools that we're going to be using that we prefer to use is an arbor press, some tape, a measuring device, Stabilo pencil, an Omni grid, a razor knife, countersink, some protective equipment, a thermometer, some clamps, a drill guide, a heat gun, some foam, and some shop towels. We're also going to be using a vacuum press today, along with a t-shirt press, drill press, sander, and a dremel. Um, the materials we're going to be using are kydex, some eyelets, your molding prop, and some pre-made blockouts. So let's get started. The first step in making a two-piece holster is that we have to determine how much material we actually need. We're going to take our prop and we're going to lay it on our material. Generally, eight inches is the magic number. For this particular mold, eight inches is going to do well. We'll go ahead and mark out eight inches at the top, eight inches at the bottom. Take our straight edge, score once, score twice. Now we need two pieces in order to do this, a top and a bottom. Let's see. We'll cut eight and eight. If it's a little crooked, not a big deal. Crack. Now, I already pre-cut a second piece. So we have a top and a bottom. Now we have our two pieces of 8x8. Eight eight. We're ready to form. Now we're going to do the heating and forming. Move this out of the way. Take our two pieces, shiny side up. We got textured side and shiny side. We want shiny side up. Put that in there just like that. Under our parchment paper. Move this back. And close her up. Now while this is heating up, I'm going to talk about what we got going on over here. So this is a piece of Supermax foam from Holster Smith and a couple of rags. Now the rags are going to act as an escape for the air, okay? If we do not have these rags, now you can use really any rags. If we don't use these, this silicone membrane right here will create a seal all the way around this uh, foam and it won't evacuate the air on top and you'll get very poor definition. So we have our mold gun prepped with our adjustable retention block, it's just a little a uh, piece of dowel taped on there. And we're going to wait for this to heat up. All right, our timer's going off. Our kydex is ready to come out. Move this out of the way. We're going to put shiny side up on the bottom. Place our mold. 
and take the second piece, textured side up, shiny side down. We're going to close this. I'm going to flip our switch. Now we're going to take our thumb and we're going to detail all the way around this as much as possible. Now we wait for it to cool. Now we wait about five minutes or so if we were to air cool this. Or alternatively, what we could do is take a bucket with some water in it, some, some ice possibly, and take our rag, soak the rag, place it on top, and it will cool off much faster. So we'll, we'll come back when this is cooled off and prepare for the next step. All right, it's been about five minutes, and we're going to crack this open and see how, how we did. Now, if you can touch this with your hand and it's just kind of warm, you know it's ready to come out. Turn the lever off. Feel it open. And take a look at our definition. Now we want to look and make sure that all the kydex is down in all the areas on both sides, and it looks like we did all right. Now we're going to move on to the next step, and that's laying out the design. All right, now we're going to lay out the design of our holster. Now, there is an unlimited amount of ways that you can do this. It, you really have to let your uh, imagination flourish. This is how I do it. First thing is, we just pulled this thing out of the press, and it's kind of stuck together. So I'm going to take this flathead screwdriver and kind of peel it off. Sometimes they can get a little stuck together. Now we're going to set the, the back half off to the side. We'll come back to that later. And we're going to draw on the front side for now. You always want to draw a majority of your eyelets and everything like that on the front. All right. So first off, we have to determine uh, how high the holster is going to come up on the, on the guy. For me, from the grip down, is a half inch. All right. Then uh, you have to determine how wide your holster is going to be. Okay. So generally, I do about a quarter inch longer on the grip side than I do on the side channel side. So we're going to do it at an inch and a half, and then an inch and a quarter. And now we have to uh, figure out, you know, make this make this uh, holster straight up and down. So what we're going to do, generally, I would have like uh, some sort of grid here, but I'm just going to have to wing it a little bit and use the edge of this uh, piece of plastic. All I'm going to do is I'm going to square this with my eye, the sight channel, and the edge here. I'm going to mark here and here. Okay. Then I'm going to draw a line across. All right, now we got our top line. Now we're going to uh, cover our trigger guard. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is establish our side lines. So I'm going to use the corner of this thing or the edge of this thing again. There, there. 
it over. Same thing. And that looks fairly straight. Now I need someone a little longer piece here. sidelines. Now we have to determine how tall the holster is going to be. Generally for short guns like the shield, I like to add just a little bit extra on the bottom. So we'll do call that. That was uh, right at four inches. Now we're going to draw on our eyelet lines, which is 3 8 from the edge in. Okay. And we're going to mark our bottom hole. We're only going to put four eyelets in here. And then three eighths from that down, two to three. And we're going to determine our angle here. Generally, I'll do five eighths. Create our diagonal. And then put an eyelet around the corner. We'll look something like that. Now, if I weren't to hollow this out, you wouldn't be able to get a grip on this holster. So I'm going to need to add a little drop or whoop, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to freehand it. Something kind of like that. A little dot for adjustable retention. And now I'll do the other side. Or bottom hole. Raise from that. Five eighths over. Create our diagonal. And then our eyelet. So that's it on the front piece. Now we have to design the back piece. So we're going to take our back piece and make sure you put the mold in there so the two pieces line up. We're going to establish where our line is and just cut it a little bit higher so we have a little wiggle room. All right. so we'll have something like that. Create our horizontal line. And then for this, you kind of just make whatever back shield you want. You can do a full body shield. I don't have the kydex all the way to the top, but um, you do generally want to cover the safety since it is a shield. But I mean, it's all personal preference. It's all personal preference how much you cover the magazine release. All that jazz. This is what it ends up looking like. All right, now we're done drawing it out. Now we're going to move on to drilling and eyeliding. Now we're going to drill our two-piece pancake-style holster. 
couple things you're going to see me do is I'm going to drill these five holes first. Okay, I'm going to use some clamps, a drill guide, a couple of long eyelets. I believe these are 810s or 812s. And you need your mold gun. Now when you drill this, you have to have the mold gun or knife or whatever you're using inside of the holster. Uh, so the two pieces match up perfectly. So I'm going to grab my safety glasses and get to it. Now that we have our holes in our two-piece pancake style holster, now we need to clean them. How we're going to do that is use a countersink. This I believe is a half inch 
You can use any size as long as it's bigger than the holes in, that you're drilling. So you can use a 3 8 half inch, 5 8 whatever. So let's get to it. Now the holes are clean, now it's ready for eyelets. All right, before we put eyelets in it, we need to uh, cut the tops first. And the reason why we have to cut the tops separately is because it's two different patterns. So what you're gonna see me do is I'm gonna cut the tops, and then I'm gonna take four eyelets, and I'm going to put them two here, two here, just to keep it lined up. Then I'm going to finish the cut, and then we'll be ready to put eyelets in it and crimp it. So let's get to it. Hey guys, we're going to take a little break right now, and I'm just going to say that if you have any questions about any of this, go ahead and shoot me an email, dave at nsrtactical.com, and I'll be glad to answer any of your questions. Also, if this looks like it's too much, or you just you know, you know, a lot of equipment to invest in, or if you just don't have the time, go ahead and take a look at our website, nsrtactical.com, and uh, we'll be able to make anything you want. All right, thanks for watching. Now let's get back to it.
All right, we just got done with our rough cut. Now we need to put eyelets in it and crimp it. All right, we just got done crimping. Now we need to bend it. All right, now we're going to bend the edges of the holster to uh, contour the body. First thing we need to do is wash the crayon off because if we keep it on there and we heat it up, the crayon will stay there. Um, so uh, typically, you just use Windex. Should come right off. mold gun in there so when we bend it the uh, it doesn't uh, squish down so and then become extra tight so you want to uh, when you're heating you want to be consistent back and forth back and forth if you hold it in one spot too long you could possibly lose definition or burn the kydex depending on your heat gun so we're just gonna apply heat I've never used this heat, particular heat gun before, so I don't know how it operates quite. But um, we're going to do the best we can. Just check it. Right, it's nice and soft. We're just going to bend it over. And it appears I did get it slightly too hot, so it's going to be a little shiny on it. Like I said, I've never used a seat gun before. Shouldn't be too bad. Okay, we're just going to hold it there for a minute until it cools. We're going to take it out and we're going to make sure this is nice and straight right here. And if you're straight, so something, something kind of like that.
go straight. A nice curve to it. Check the fit. Feels good. If it ends up being too tight as it is right now before you put the adjustable retention in, I recommend you heat up the back first and try to get it set as opposed to heating up the front. Um, you know, in the front is what everybody sees, so you want to keep that nice and neat. You have to release some of the definition, really good on the back. So, but I think we're good. Um, now we're ready to sand it. All right, we just got done bending our two-piece pancake style holster. Now we need to sand the edges to make everything square or nice. A couple tools other than the sander I'm going to be using is the OmniGrid. We're going to be using the OmniGrid against the eyelets to measure from the eyelets to the edge of the holster to make everything nice and parallel. Uh, the other thing we're going to be using is a Dremel to get into these tight spots on this holster. So let's get to it.
All right, we just got done sanding. Now we're going to enter the pre-buff stage. This is an aluminum oxide satin wheel. Uh, we use this uh, daily and it works great for us. What we're going to be using it for is to knock off all the burrs, um, all the uh, sharp points, and prep it for polishing. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, that's it for the pre-buff, and then we can move on to the polishing. However, that's going to be for another video. All right, that concludes our tutorial. My name is Dave White. I'm owner of NSRTactical.com. Follow us on Facebook as NSR Tactical Gear, and on Instagram as just NSR Tactical. Thanks for watching my video, and I'll see you next time.